prosecutors bear the industrial underside of the German war machine, providing evidence that Alfred Krupp had both supervised war production and was an active member of the Nazi party. He regularly exchanged intelligence information. A Krupp factory at the Auschwitz complex produced fuses for the war effort. Krupp had permitted and even encouraged slave labor, signing detailed contracts with the SS. Thousands had died from hunger and beatings, not just at Auschwitz and far away, but in company factories at Essen. On July 31st, 1948, after nine months of trial, Alfred Krupp was sentenced, along with nine members of the firm's board of directors. Krupp received a 12-year sentence. He had expected that. And then, surprisingly, judges announced that both his personal and company property would be confiscated, thus shattering the Krupp dynasty. Witnesses recall that Krupp grew faint. Germany began negotiations with Israel and Jewish groups for reparation payments to Hitler's victims. Adenauer mounted pressure on McCloy to halt denazification and modify the Nuremberg sentences. A specially appointed board, after a year's review, recommended widespread clemency. In January 1951, in an action that many outside Germany found shocking, McCloy commuted, paroled, or reduced sentences on 79 of 89 war criminals. He affirmed only five of nine death sentences. Most Germans reacted positively. The most controversial of the decisions had to do with Alfred Krupp. McCloy released him, effectively sweeping much of Germany's Nazi past under the rug. McCloy also restored the Krupp family fortune, overnight making a convicted war criminal one of the world's richest men. Alfred Krupp came back home, welcomed by friends, family, and Krupp workers and managers. Though there were still demands for its dissolution, in effect, the Krupp firm was preserved. Normalcy had returned to Germany.
ist Alfreds letzter Wille. Familie und Firma werden getrennt. Diesen Weg zu gehen, ermöglichte mein Sohn Art durch seinen Abverzicht. Für seine verantwortungsbereite Einsicht möchte ich ihm vor aller Öffentlichkeit ausdrücklich danken. Möge es Ihnen vergönnt sein, die weitere Entwicklung unserer Firma noch viele Jahre mitzugestalten und mitzuverfolgen. But there, at any rate, my Soviet friends found no trace of Hitler himself. But there was the body of Goebbels, a shot outside the entrance to the shelter. And walking back across the garden and round the ornate lily pond that lies in the middle of it, we came to a spot at the foot of some wooden steps that lead up into this room. They're just ten feet from me there by the window as I stand. But there, at the bottom of those steps, they found the half-burned body of a man with a lock of black hair on the right-hand side of his face and a little black moustache. And they looked at him more closely, and their doctors came to the conclusion that it was what they call a bad double of Hitler and not Hitler himself. If that is so, then all trace of him has disappeared. And only is left behind this indescribable confusion of smashed woodwork, of bullet holes, of, she of shell holes, of dust and rubble and filth. And standing in it, these grave, solemn, motionless Soviet officers and guards, who now stand guard in this building, which was both the beginning and the end of National Socialism. The body of Goebbels and his wife and children had been found here. We asked about Hitler's body. The general smiled and said at least six bodies of Hitler had been offered to the Red Army by Germans. None of them were in recognizable state. There's a need for a new world order.